Hi guys, welcome back to Wong Chemistry channel. This is the part 2 of your topic 3.2 periodic city. And in here, we will still talk about atomic radii, but slightly different. We will talk about atomic radii specifically for transition element across period 4. Okay? So first and foremost, the question will definitely be, what is transition element and where is transition element in the periodic table? In the periodic table, your transition element is located in your D block. Okay, all the element in this D block is what we call transition element. All right, and you realize that your transition element, your D block will only start at period 4. Okay, only at period 4, you will come across your transition element. And just a kind reminder, why everything in your transition element is located in the D block? What is the D block stand for? The D block means the last electron that you fill in is in the D orbital. Alright, which means all the elements in here were having their last electron fill in into a D orbital. Alright, and why is that only across period 4? Because we are going to look at the first row of your transition element in this periodic table. So the transition element in the period 4 will be this group of people all the way from your scandium to zinc. That is the transition element that we have across period 4. First and foremost, we are going to look at the proton number across this period 4 transition element. And if you can... And if you look at the value of the proton number, you realize that from your scandium all the way to your zinc, your proton number is in the increasing trend. Everybody knows that. Moving from the left to the right of your periodic table, your proton number is always increasing. So when the proton number increasing, you should then know your effective nuclear charge also increasing. When effective nuclear charge is increasing, in the other words, the force of attraction from the nucleus to the valence electron should also stronger. When the force of attraction is stronger, by right, the size should get smaller. And I use the word by right should get smaller. So in this case, the size is actually not getting a lot smaller significantly. The atomic radius of your transition element in period 4 will not change significantly. There will be changes when you're moving from your scandium all the way to your zinc, but the changes is too small and is very insignificant. That's why we will assume there is almost no changes in the term of your atomic radius from your scandium to zinc. In the other words, the size will be relatively constant from your scandium all the way to your zinc. So the question over here in your mind should be why the size is relatively constant? Why the size is not changing so much? Why the changes of the size is not significant? So why the size is not getting smaller even though the proton number actually increases? Let's see. So as we all agree, moving from the left to the right in your periodic table, your proton number increases. When your proton number increases, the effective nuclear charge increases. Yes, but the force of attraction over here will be relatively constant. So the question over here is why the force of attraction is constant. Simple. Let's look at the electronic configuration of your scandium. Scandium having 21 Proton, therefore a neutral scandium will be having 21 electron 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d1. So everybody knows that after 3p, we will fill in 4s and then only fill in 3d. Okay, and then let's look at the next after scandium is your titanium. So let's look at titanium. Titanium, 22 electron, you will have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. From the 3p6, moving up to your 4s2, according to Aufbau principle, and then only 3d, 2. 
So that is your 22. And we shall focus at your 3D right now. So the changes, it actually happen at the 3D orbital. In the other words, the extra one electron along the way will be actually added into 3D orbital. So we can prove that again by looking at vanadium. So let's look at vanadium, the next element over here. Vanadium 23. So you can see 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, settle, 10 electron. 3s2, 3p6, 18 electron. After the 3p going into your 4s2. And then you have 20 electron already. The last 3 electron will be in the 3d3. And again, the electron that you have added in from the titanium to vanadium, you have extra 1 electron. And the extra 1 electron once again added into 3d. So the electron will be added into 3d orbital. And we know that the 3d orbital in this case is what we call inner shell. All right. When the 3D orbital is in the inner shell, all right, because your outermost shell is your 4S. Your outermost shell is your 4S, okay? So when the electron is added to the 3D orbital, which is in the inner shell, then what happened? Shielding effect increase. Your shielding effect will be changing over here. The shielding effect will increase because you have more electron in your inner shell. The electron is added into the inner shell. When the shielding effect is increased, the force of attraction that you have from the nucleus, all right, the force of attraction from the nucleus to the valence electron will be shielded away. So even though your proton number right now is increasing when you're moving across the period four, yes, in your nucleus, you have more positive charge. Yes. But at the same time, your shielding effect also increases because you have more electron in the center. So when you have more electron in the center, your shielding effect increases. So when your shielding effect is increases, your force of attraction from the nucleus to reach the valence electron is shielded by the electron that added into the 3D. So what happened to the force of attraction? The force of attraction will be eventually cancelled off by the shielding effect okay and that is the reason why your atomic size when you're moving across transition element your atomic size will be relatively constant your proton number increasing at the same time the charge in the nucleus increase at the same time your shielding effect increase so even though you have more charge more power to pull the electron but at the same time you have more shield that blocking the attraction therefore the size will be relatively constant, okay? And this is the notes that you can use to understand this to explain the atomic radii when you move across transition element. Actually, not only in period 4, in any other period, as long as you are talking about atomic radii across the transition element, it will be the same reason, okay? So why across the period 4, the size do not change significantly? Because electron is added to their inner 3D orbital. So when the electron in the inner 3D orbital increase, it will shield the outer 4S from the nucleus attraction. So even though the effective nuclear charge increase, but it will then be cancelled by the shielding effect. Okay, then the force of attraction or the effective nuclear charge will be relatively constant across period 4. As a result, your atomic radii will be also remain relatively similar when you're moving across transition element, okay? This is a special case for transition element. That's why I keep it in another video. If you want to look at the variation of atomic radii across a period and also going down a group, you can watch the part one video of it, okay? This video is talking only about the atomic radii of transition element, all right? And that's it. A very short video, a very simple concept and something very easy for you to understand. So I hope after you watch the video, you're able to explain why the atomic radii across the transition element in period 4 will remain relatively constant. If you still have any question, make sure you ask in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Remember to like and subscribe the channel. 
Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back in the next video. Thank you.